Okay, in this video we're looking at how to incorporate a button in the Knight Rider assignment. And that button will turn off and on the, the animation. The animation I have currently in this version of the project is just a really straightforward um, lighting up of the LEDs. The simulator is running quite slowly. You can see it's just starting to get into kind of a real-time mode there so it kind of got stuck for a moment you do have to watch that time up there and if it seems to be going these are seconds now so it seems to be going it seems to be going kind of at real time now but it does sometimes take some time to get there so that might make you think something isn't working properly um, so just kind of watch if it's got a decimal and you know hundreds and thousands of seconds then it's probably just running very slowly and you need to wait a few moments but you can see the LED moving back and I've um, only turned on one at a time you know if you're uh, if you're trying to get this assignment done and you're struggling this is a good place to to get to and if you uh, want to add some extra kind of effects where you know this LED might be on just a little bit with PWM just a trailing effect the LED behind the main one you could do that too but I think the the other thing to think about is just getting the the uh, the on off switch working and I, for some reason in this one I didn't even use the potentiometer so I'll try to do a quick video on that too this so the pu the push button is uh, you would think is might be kind of a s simple straightforward thing it turns out and it, it, it isn't complicated but it's hard to get it to work well so this first attempt is going to do it the way that I think um, would be the you know the first way to think about it and that is to connect the push button to a digital pen that's the same in either case but uh, the, the first way we'll, we'll use the button is it will be connected to a digital pin. So we see it's connected here to pin 2. So I better pin mode that as an input to begin. And so that's pin 2, and that's an input. Um, you know, and sometimes you might actually make that a, uh, you know, a, a variable or a constant. Uh, or you might use a define statement there. A constant is just a variable that will never change within the code. I mean, I could change this, you know, if this is a real Arduino and the wire broke off in the pin and I had to use a different pin, or I could change the number here and recompile it to run it. But while this code is running, because I use this keyword here, constant, then it, the uh, compiler won't let me try to change this value later on. Not a big deal. Could could just say two here, but uh, I've changed that to an input. Why don't we just read it? See if we can read it and in our main loop here and find out what's going on. Print it out. See if we can find out what's going on. Uh, so I've created a integer uh, variable here. I do a digital read on the button pin, and then I'm printing it out on the uh, serial dot print line and I have set up the serial port so we have it working there it's printing a zero we're into relatively fast time here now the real time I, I guess and then we've only printed one zero and it's going to take a while for us to get back through the loop before we do another uh, oh, what did I do here? Here, it's going to take a while before we read that that uh, button pin again because we're going to have to go through this loop and through this loop entirely before we come back. And that is going to occur when the, the LED comes back over here um, in this direction. I'm going to hold it down right now. There, and you can see it just read just after I pressed. It must have read it, but I'm, I'm pressing it now. Let me just press it for a while here, and then I'll let go. Of course, when I let go, it's, a, it's going to read it again when it gets to the end here and starts going the other direction. I was pressing it, but because I've let go and it read it there, we get a zero. So you can see, you can see that it's going to be easy. If we do it this way, it's going to be easy to miss some button presses. 
So just be aware of that. Let's think about the logic of how this will work. And then we'll get back to trying to deal with this, this button press issue. So first of all, um, you know, there's a couple of ways we could think about it. So, you know, we really want the animation to only work when we've, you know, uh, set it. We, it's going to work in two modes. So it's either going to be on and then when we press the button, it will turn off or it's going to be off. And we, when we press the button, it's going to turn back on. We could call that toggling. And you might think that you simply, you know, would look to see if button was equal to high. You might think this, right? And then if that's the case, you're going to uh, run the animation. You really want to be careful with your uh, brackets at this point. So I'll just indent that. So, and if we do that, it's not running. The button is low. Now the button will notice is running much faster now because we're not getting stuck into those. Watch this. We get zeros all coming all the way out. And that's because it's re it, is, it isn't doing any of the loop. It isn't doing any, any of the delays. It's just reading the button over and over again and printing it. Let me press it. And as immediately it starts animating. It also stops printing. And that's because it's stuck back in this loop. And it's not going to read the button. I can't turn it off. I'm pressing the button. Well, it wouldn't turn off anyways, would it? Because the, the way I set it up doesn't do this toggling thing. I'm not pressing the button. It's going to stop again because uh, I'm not pressing it and it's back to this if statement and noticing that the, the button value at red was low. You know, this isn't a bad starting point. This is something. This is using the button and it's got something happening. But let's try a toggling idea. So in other words, I might have a variable that's like whether this is on or off or the, you know, the, the animation, uh, you know, state. I'll just call it animation. So, and I'm going to make it a boolean. So if it's true, then the it's a boolean. It's called animation, and I can make it false to start. That means the the uh, LEDs won't light up. I can make it true. I'm just testing this. This isn't. A bad idea to make sure this simple variable is going to work first to do what we think it is. So there it is. It's now in slow motion, but it is lighting up. So what we can do now is we can use this variable. We can use our button to decide whether or not to change. To, to we can use the button press to change this but this uh, variable from true. If it's true, we would change it to false. And if it was false, we would change it to true. And what that would accomplish is a toggling type of behavior for this animation. So just like when I changed it up here, I could see that I could turn it on and off. Now the button press is going to do that. So if this button was in fact high, then we should check the animation. And if the animation is true, then, well, we'll make it false. And if it wasn't true, it was false because it's a Boolean. It can only be one of two things. So if it wasn't true, I will make it, uh, I'll make it false. Uh, sorry, if it wasn't true, it was false. And if it was false, I want to make it true. I know that sounds confusing. You just have to kind of spell things correctly and think about it. <laughs> just slow down and think about it. So, okay, so this is checking for a button press. And if there is a button press, this is going to toggle the animation. I would call this the state. Okay, so let's see what we got going on here. No errors. Now the animation state was set to true, so it's already on. And I'm just going to wait for it to come back to the other side here. I might cut these down because I don't really need this off delay, you know. It's 
entirely up to you whether you include one of those. Okay, so I'm going to press the button. And, oh, well, and here it is. Here's the problem. <laughs> Here's the problem. It's hard to make this button work properly now because, one, it's not being read, right? It's not being read right now. That's a problem. You can Maybe you can tell I'm pressing it, but I'm going to try to press it right now. No, still not turning it off. So why is it not working? It's because it's not reading it in these loops, right? It's not reading it in these loops, and I'm trying to time it to be read just here. And you know what? If I do toggle it to false, that means this thing is going to turn off, which means I could be pressing the button still, right? I could be holding that button down, trying to get that button pressed. Um, after it turns off, it might see the button still being pressed and turn it back on. So this is really challenging to get this to work properly. One step we could do is to turn this into a function. And this is a really good thing. I think you should try this. Okay, so let's be careful to grab our full bit of toggling code. Okay, so let's grab this. Let's grab all of this. Okay, let's grab all of this here. And we're going to move it into its own function. So this is a little mini tutorial on functions. It's going to be check button. And it's, it's a void because this is the return type and we're not going to return anything. All we're going to do is we're going to do all that work we said we would do. We will use this global variable called animation and we will toggle it if it in fact is uh, in, if we see a button press. It's the exact same code but the but the the good thing about this is that we can start checking the button using a function. We can start checking it more frequently. Why don't we check it inside of these loops? And we'll also check it outside of the loop because if we're not running inside of this, if this is false, we're never, we never check these ones in here. So we need one up here. I'm also going to add a tiny delay. What's a tiny delay? That's a tenth of a second. That's pretty small. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to put that right in the function. And why am I going to put in a tiny delay? I'm just going to put a tiny delay in here to... Uh, make sure I'll just put it right here and to make sure uh, I'll put it right here I'll if the button was pressed we'll put in a tiny delay and that's so hopefully when we check it next the, the you know uh, so that's so hopefully by the time uh, the delay is over the person's finger has lifted off the button okay and then we just check it inside of these uh, loops and that lets us have, you know, a chance to check it more frequently and to turn it off more frequently. Now, the only problem is, is that the, um, I'm going to set this to false. Okay, let's start with it off. <laughs> we'll at least see something happen when we start. It's the really, it's the turning it off step that's difficult. So there it's off, button press. Now, there it's on, and we're in super slow motion. Okay, so now we're going at regular speed. And I'll try to turn it off. Now, the thing is, I know that... Okay, so I did a button press. I'm going to wait. It's not going to check this if statement again. Okay, down here. It's not going to check the animation. The animation might be false now, but it's not checking it until it's back out of the loop. Oh, it looks like I missed it. Well... This is about as good as we can get it, except for one last step. Let me try this once more. Come on. Three, two, one. Press. Oh! <laughs> okay, last step. You know what? If we're inside the loop and the animation is supposed to be false, let's just not light up the LED. Okay, so if it's true, we will light it up. So we're just, why are you doing this? I'm doing this because I know that sometimes the animation variable has been set to false even when I'm inside the loop. So let's pretend we're just not going to light up the LED. Well, let's, let's actually not light up the LED. Okay, so if animation, 
equals true, we will light up the LED, okay? And if, if it's false, we won't. Um, and I think I will just be consistent. We won't light it up, we won't talk, we won't delay either. Okay, let's see. Uh, you can see this is pretty frustrating, and I know that it's, see it's still warming up here. There we go. Okay, it caught my button press to turn it. It might be I'm pressing at the same time in the loop all the time. I don't know. And I pressed it number a number of times there. Really? Is it that? Am I reading it? I put it in here. Yeah, and it worked to turn it on. It is just, it is really is that difficult sometimes to get this thing to work. It shouldn't be this hard, but it might be the simulator working against me. Oh, I got it. <laughs> it's turned off. It does work. It's super frustrating. Let's stop the video here and uh, I'll look at how to do this using an interrupt on the next video.